Hey guys, it's Ropsy, back with Paperless X. In today's video, we'll be going through the basics of Todoist. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Todoist is a to-do app by Doist Inc. It's available on Mac OS. Windows, iPadOS, iOS, and Android. It also has a web app. This review focuses on the web version, which is exactly the same on macOS and Windows. Todoist is a freemium app that's free to use with an option to unlock Pro features for $5 per month if you're an individual or $8 per user per month for businesses. It's cheaper to pay per year. Todoist is one of the cheapest apps of this kind. So, is this the right app for you and your team? Let's find out. Adding a new task is fairly straightforward. Todoist is a minimalist app, which makes it easy to figure out. You can name your task and add a description. Interestingly, you can format your title to make it bold or italic. You can also add code and links to it. We have never seen that before. It's cool. Your description also supports similar formatting options as well as headings, codes, and lists, both numbered and the numbered ones. A detailed description is important to have for a to-do app. Your to-do is not complete without a due date and time. And you have the option to choose a time zone if you need that. You have to type in your time, which is faster than what we've seen in other apps. Flag colors for priorities are odd. We also get priority one, two, three, which is very unusual for Get Things Done app. Priorities are usually high, medium, or low. It's a better system, no matter how hard we try to understand their logic for this. Their tags make more sense because at least they add details to the task. They're better for adding priority levels than flags. Reminders are a pro feature. They are those on our team, without mentioning any names, that turn off all their notifications for all the apps on all their devices. They won't have a problem with that limitation. However, until we know exactly what they are, we can't comment much on them. We'll cover all the pro features in a different video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. For repeating tasks, Todoist's approach is unique, but not necessarily better. That's because natural language is honestly not that good. We should just have the options available for scrolling through to set what we need. We love typing for time, not so much for repeating cycles. It seems to just take more brain power. Marking tasks as complete removes them from the list. You can choose to show completed tasks. They are struck out and dimmed, making them easy to differentiate from incomplete ones. A project in Todoist is a list of your to-dos. You can name it, pick a color, and a view for it. Your view can either be a list or board. You can also group or sort the to-dos in your list according to different criteria. And we feel the name project is inaccurate. They're lists, simple ones too. You can collaborate on your projects or lists with up to five people if you're using the free version of Todoist. 
Everyone you invite has full control over the project, though. They can do pretty much everything you can do. That includes removing you from your own project. This is the worst collaboration feature we have seen in any app so far. You can assign tasks to your team members and they can assign to you. Todoist doesn't have an assigned to me smart list for you to quickly access to do's your team's delegates to you. You can create a filter for it though, which is a decent workaround, but still a workaround nonetheless. At least you can comment on your tasks. They also have formatting options, which means they can be quite useful for teamwork. You can also attach any document that is less than 5 megabytes and record an audio of less than 4 minutes. It helps when you can comment on to-dos you're collaborating on. We have mixed feelings about Todoist's organization. Your subtasks can be as detailed as your main task, which we love. The app also supports subtasks within subtasks. One subtask level is usually enough. Only the list view shows subtasks below their main tasks. It's also easy to rearrange your tasks in this view, which is awesome. However, even with the indentation, it's not very easy to see the distinction between main tasks and subtasks. We've found sections to make more sense in the app than subtasks. Your projects can have sub-projects up to four levels, which again is overkill for a to-do app. Above them, you have a few basic smart lists that are easy to figure out. Your inbox contains all your tasks that don't belong to any project. Filters and labels are supposed to help you create custom lists. However, you encounter the typing problem. It feels more like coding for most of us because it comes with codes and formats that you need to know to use them. This is something you only bother learning once you've decided to use Todoist as your main to-do app. You can name these and pick colors for them. You can mark different items as favorites in Todoist. All of which makes sense. Searching in Todoist seems fairly simple at first. You can search through projects, tasks, filters, and tags. However, detailed results are only available for tasks and comments. To get the most out of your search, we need to go back to that queries coding stuff. Just thinking about it is exhausting. So, searching still needs some work to simplify it and give us more results for what we're looking for. Let us know what you think about Todoist. We'll have a fuller conclusion once we've studied its paid version. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, fantastic human, for watching. See you in the next video.